Hi guys. So today I want to talk to you guys about um, kind of like COVID Christmas and also um, just dealing with grief during the holidays. Um, I see a lot of different, you know, posts that are going on these days and some are like funny memes and some are, you know, people just really trying to keep the tradition of the holiday spirit alive and doing all these cool little like recipes of drink recipes and different um, dishes for the holidays, you know, whether they're traditional or not. And I think that's all well and great. I think that's wonderful for people to have that. But I really feel a very, very strong need to speak to um, the opposite of that. Um, a lot of people are experiencing the opposite of their normal, quote, normal um, traditions that they would normally experience. And I was kind of struggling on what it was I wanted to discuss this week for the holiday week. And I just figured, you know, okay, I'll just keep it very light and campy and I won't air one of the guest interview episodes today. I'll just keep it very light. But I really felt like there was just something else I was supposed to be discussing with you guys. And I get a lot of my inspiration from past experiences and the experiences of other people that other people are experiencing. And I was getting ready. I was, you know, going through the process of, you know, doing my guest interviews and scheduling people. And, you know, usually like the first time I hear something, I hear it, I put it on the shelf, my mental shelf, that is. And, um, and then I don't really at least consciously think about it that much again. And then the second time I hear it, I go, oh my gosh, that is, that's something. Okay. That's, that's the second time I've kind of heard something like that. But then the third time I hear something, I, I realize that something is trying to get my attention. And when I realize that something is trying to get my attention, I realize that it's something that is happening a lot and that it's something that I should probably speak to. And again, I get like a lot of my inspiration from past experiences and the experiences of people around me. So I thought, you know what? I, this, this is the topic. This is the topic for this holiday week because I think a lot of people are maybe, like I said, not feeling very festive right now and there's been a lot of loss this year. And I'm not just talking about COVID loss. I'm not just referring to, um, you know, a lot of the, you know, stuff that's been going on um, in the world with, you know, racism and that type of violence. I mean, there's definitely been a lot of that. There's definitely been a lot of um, loss from COVID, but people are still experiencing regular loss. But I also wanted to specifically speak about you know, loss of our freedom in a way, our freedom to be able to go wherever we want, do whatever we want, whenever we want, without restrictions, without wearing a mask, without doing all these things. Um, and I think that it's really important that we really kind of talk about the, the quote, little deaths, okay? Um, little deaths are just I don't want to say just, but little deaths are not necessarily the loss of a loved one per se, but they are a loss of something that was once very familiar to us, you know, something that was a constant in our lives. There was a sense of, you know, like I said, freedom, like not having curfew, being able to go to whatever restaurant is in town, being able to travel and see whoever it is that we want to see, have our family and friends over for the holidays. And I don't know about you guys, but I personally am, you know, really kind of dealing with the fact that I'm not getting to be able to gather, you know, this year the way I have in years past and, you know, having to keep numbers very small and very minimal and just kind of having to sort of pick and choose, you know, who it is that I can spend time with, you know, this year because of 
all of the restrictions and, you know, people are just, they're scared. But, um, but the thing that really hit me the hardest, I think it was last week or this past weekend, I just got gotten finished taping another episode um, that's actually going to air after the first of the year. And I'm going to resume with the guest uh, interview episodes after the first of the year. But this week and next, I really just want to kind of talk to you guys directly and, you know, just kind of get a sense of where you guys are at. So um, I wanted to discuss the, um, what is it, the five different stages of grief. Okay, so I know a lot of people are familiar with that. And there's just been a lot of grief. So what happened that my kind of like final straw with, okay, this I have to discuss was um, I, one of the, one of the people that I'm going to be interviewing just lost someone um, this year, not to COVID, uh, it was an overdose. And it just, it's heartbreaking and um, I think it was last week's episode when I was speaking with uh, life coach Carlene Gill. She was on the show and she was talking about um, someone who had committed suicide. And then on Saturday when I'm doing another interview, someone else was talking to me about a suicide. And there's just a lot of depression this year. Um, I mean, there's always depression, but I feel like now more than ever because people are not really having a lot of their addictions, their regular addictions met. And by addictions, I mean just like outside distractions, not necessarily drugs or alcohol per se, but just outside distracting things of, you know, going here, going there, hanging out with this person, hanging out with that person, you know, all those little things, you know, getting caught up in traffic and just like the day to day that just sort of takes you out of your head. And what I'm realizing is that, you know, I've personally been dealing with a lot uh, this past year with uh, during COVID. And while I love working from home, I never really thought of myself as just working from home. I thought I would work from home and maybe a coffee shop or a cafe and, you know, sit there and use the Wi-Fi all day and things like that. But um what I've realized is, is that a lot of things that have come to the surface for me and actually for other people too, a lot of other people that I've spoken to over the past I don't know, nine months, I guess. And um, it's that the things that I'm dealing with are not all new things. A lot of them are old things. And it's just really, I feel like COVID and quarantine in particular really just gives you an opportunity to, um, how can I put it? It really gives you an opportunity to confront things that you've been distracting yourself from confronting. So while there have been new things to kind of come up, i.e. not being able to have the freedom to go wherever you want, right? But also, I feel like that more than anything, it's just triggering. It's just triggering emotionally, a feeling either a feeling of feeling stuck or um, a feeling of not being exactly where you want to be in your life, feeling held back in some way, feeling like you're not progressing at the level that you would like to as quickly as you would like to and things like that. Um, and so it's really, it's been maybe 3% new stuff and about 97% old stuff that, you know, maybe either I either thought was already resolved or I didn't even realize was an issue. Um, but I just really wanted to, you know, approach you guys about this subject because I feel like if I'm feeling it, I know I'm not the only one feeling it. There are other people experiencing it also. And with the loss, and I mean, particularly the losses of our loved ones and, and, you know, whether it's family member or friends, I started remembering, this is a while back now, but when I lost my grandmother who helped raise me and she was such an amazing woman and such an amazing spirit. 
And I remember the first um, holiday season without her after she had passed. And it was very, very difficult. It was actually almost more difficult in a way than, um, than losing her in a way, because it, it just sort of reaffirmed that loss. It reaffirmed that, you know, my life was different. It was never going to be exactly the same. I will always have the memories of her in my heart and I'm very grateful to those. But at the same time, you know, it just wasn't the same. And it was just a really, it was just a really hard, hard time. So I want to say to people that either if you have lost someone this year, particularly this year or the past couple of years, um, or for people who know someone who has lost someone, I really, I want for people who have lost someone, I encourage you to reach out. I really encourage you to reach out. And for people who know someone who saw someone, I encourage you to reach out to them. Because when I hear things about overdosing and suicides and things like that, and people are depressed, and I get people are depressed partly because they can't socialize the way that they're accustomed to socializing. And there is an element of that, you know, psychologically and emotionally, you know, that definitely impacts people. But I really think that we have to be more sensitive to the fact that not everyone has family or not everyone can spend time with their family uh, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe they're sick, you know, maybe, you know, they just passed away. Maybe, you know, they're in hospice. Maybe, you know, there's a lot of different, you know, variables and it's a very difficult situation for people to deal with. And I know it's so easy for people to just kind of know in the back of their head, like, oh, yes, they lost a parent, they lost a grandparent, they lost an aunt, an uncle, a sister, a brother. I want you to really go beyond um, just knowing it, because way too many people suffer in silence. And when people suffer in silence, that's what really makes them susceptible to the overdosing, to the suicide or the suicide attempts. And you just don't really always know where people are. And one thing that I definitely noticed, and this is, you know, after the passing of my grandmother, and one of the things I noticed is that the second year and the third year for me were kind of harder than the first year. And I remember you know, feeling that way and just not really sure why I was feeling that way. I was like, well, you know, it's the first, I got through the first holiday season without her. I should be fine and all of that. And I heard something, it was really interesting. I heard something on, um, it's a psychic medium called John Edward. And he was saying how a lot of times it is difficult for people more in the second year because a lot of the support, the emotional support that they had in the first year, they don't have in the following years. And all of a sudden just, it clicked for me and it just made sense. And I realized why I was having a more difficult time in year two and year three than in previous years. And um, so I just, I want you to know there are a lot of people around you that may seem like they have it all together and that they may seem, you know, just like they're okay and they're maybe just kind of shrugging you off and they're isolating. And it's just, it's just too many people suffer in silence. I don't care if we're in a pandemic or not. We're in the year 2020, not 1920. You can FaceTime, you can WhatsApp, you can Zoom, you can, you can pick up the phone and do more than just text someone you can pick up the phone and you can call them and you can reach out. You know, you can't make people pick up, but you can at least make that attempt or you can at least say like, you know, maybe depending on what your relationship is with that person or how they tend to isolate or detach kind of more from 
people, you can maybe send them a text and say, hey, um, if you're up for a call sometime, let me know. Um, you know, because sometimes you don't want to put people on this spot because, again, you don't know how it is people are grieving. But however it is that you're grieving um, is it's important, you know, and it's important to have that time to yourself. And, you know, there is a time to isolate, but you don't want to go too far in your isolation to where you're just not even letting the love in that's there for you. You have, you know, as long as you have friends or even a friend, even if you have one good friend or one, you know, solid family member, reach out and, so again, like if you're not feeling festive, just know that's that's okay. Um, again, you don't have to be depressed simply because you feel like somehow you're you're paying homage to your family member or whoever has passed away that's close to you. You don't have to grieve and feel depressed and uh, feel bad for feeling good you know, just out of respect to them because, you know, they would want you to be happy. And so I just kind of wanted to briefly just kind of like touch on the different, you know, stages of grief for you guys. And um, so that that way you can kind of have a sense of where you are and know that it's, it's normal. And while you don't want to get stuck there, I really want to encourage people to know that it is okay to give grief a place at your table. It really is. It's it's okay to cry out that um, that loss, and it may not be the last tear you cry, but it's it's important to to honor what you're feeling and just not holding it all inside and holding it all together just because you know maybe you want to save face with. I don't know, whoever's asking you if you're okay, right? So the first one I wanted to talk about is denial. Now, these don't really have to go in any particular order. Everything, um, you know, kind of has its place with you. You can go through these stages multiple times. You can, you know, go from denial to acceptance and, you know, bypass anger altogether. And you can do all of those different things. But um, but just know like what it is that you're going through. It is just a part of your healing process and, and just to acknowledge it, uh, to honor it and, and allow yourself that, um, those emotions. So the one I'm going to talk about first, again, is denial, you know, um, it's like, no, like I'm okay. Like even just like denying how you feel you know, denying that you have any emotion and because, you know, maybe you experienced acceptance last week doesn't mean that today you can't be experiencing some level of denial this week, you know, feeling like you're okay or what, whatever it is of just, of just not really fully honoring what you're feeling. It's not necessarily, not necessarily saying that, you know, the person isn't gone. Like, obviously, you know, the person is gone, but Maybe, you know, for you, it's, you know, someone you know is in hospice or, you know, they're asking to go into hospice and you don't really know what you should do or if you should give up or not give up. And, you know, you can go through that whole grieving process before you've even had a loss because it's still, it's still a little death. It's still a loss for you because it's a loss of what you've known to be true for however long, you know, you've lived your life with that person. So that's, that's one stage. Um, anger, like anger is another stage. And the thing I want to remind people of is that anger is a secondary emotion, right? So beneath that is always going to be some form of depression. Anger is really just, you know, hurt, fear, and frustration. Okay. It's an anger sort of gives gives it a voice and it's almost like your ego's way in a way of giving it a voice because as long as you can seem pissed you won't seem sad and you know we know what anger looks like right I don't really have to break that one down but it's just like you know what the fuck like what the hell like this is bullshit this is you know this can't be happening whatever it is I mean if you want to be mad like get mad 
just let that, let that out, give it a voice, you know, go, you know, if you can find somewhere to go and like release that anger and, you know, maybe like, I don't know, if you have a backyard and some old glasses or something that you don't need anymore and a baseball bat and just like hit stuff or punch a pillow or, you know, take some boxing gloves and hit something if you have a punching bag or, or what have you, just, just find a way to channel and release that anger, you know, even, and I don't mean release the anger, unleash it on someone, right? I'm not meaning that. So don't, don't say that I said that. Don't say you heard me say that. That's not what I'm saying. It's not about taking out your anger on other people. You know, you can, you can turn to someone without turning on them. And so if you're angry, you can simply, you know, call up someone that you know who will listen to you and say, I'm just so angry. I'm just so pissed that she's gone, that he's gone, that they're not here, that they took their life, that they, whatever it is. But just honor that. Honor that it's okay for you to be angry. And it doesn't mean that you have to lack compassion for the person that, you know, lost their life. You can have compassion for someone and be angry that, you know, you don't get to see them anymore at the same time. You can actually have both of those emotions at the same time. And I know it seems really conflicting, but you actually can. Okay. Um, so that's anger. Um, then we have, you know, bargaining. Bargaining is, I feel like bargaining is almost like the hardest one because you're doing the whole what if thing, right? You're doing, well, what if I would have made this choice for them instead of that choice for them? What if I would have called them? Like maybe if I, if I would have called them, you know, maybe they would not have, you know, made that decision. Maybe they would not have taken their life. Maybe that, you know, all of these what ifs and maybes that don't really even get you anywhere other than just knowing that you're just sad you're just sad that they're gone and you know and maybe you're not sad maybe you just piss the fuck off and like that's fine too but again find a way to you know even if you have to get a therapist there are, there are plenty of therapists out there there are plenty of resources out there that you can that you can take call a hotline if there's, you know, a hotline that you can call, like if you are having suicidal thoughts, if you are, you know, having, um, you know, temptations to, to relapse and possibly overdose. I mean, make sure that you, you take those resources and you use them. You know, if you have someone in your community that, you know, if you're a religious person and you have a church or there's like a church member or there's a call list, just please just reach out to people and please don't choose to suffer in silence. Just please don't. It's just, it's not worth it. I get like everybody wants their alone time and there is healing in that, but don't take it to such an extreme that you're just sitting alone in a room with your dark thoughts and not reaching out to anyone and letting anyone know that you're suffering. Um, you know, there's a lot of situations in which we bargain. You know, we can bargain through like a breakup. You know, and maybe for some of you that that's a loss that you've recently experienced this year, you know, whether it's, you know, a breakup or someone, you know, you're separating or um, you've gotten divorced or you're contemplating divorce. And, you know, there, there are so many different ways in which we bargain and go, you know, what if, right? And the thing that I would say is like bargaining is a tricky one because that one is actually, that one can just torture you it's really just a I feel like for me at least one of the worst forms of self-torture because I forget now where I heard it but I heard this saying a really long time ago and you know it's when you're just really wondering what could have happened if and the saying that I heard and I try to remind myself of it anytime I, I find myself in a situation where I'm bargaining after the fact, like after something is just completely done, you know, that person is gone out of your life um, for, you know, however they left your life, whether through a breakup or through a death, um, it's still a death of 
you know, that chapter of your life, right? Um, but the saying was, what could have happened has. What could have happened has. Yes, it could have happened where, you know, you, um, you know, you got the result that you wanted. I mean, it could have happened that way. But if it didn't happen that way, just know that you torturing yourself over it isn't going to change it. So just remind yourself when you do catch yourself in that state of bargaining, just say to yourself, you know, what could have happened has. And, and that kind of frees you up from the self-torture that you're putting yourself through. So I want to make sure that, you know, you guys really get that. And there, again, there's so many resources out there that are available to you. And this, this video is just one of them. So just know that. So the next one that I want to mention is um, depression. We all know depression like far too well. And there's different ways that we can, you know, we can grieve that, you know, sometimes it's crying. Sometimes, sometimes you're so sad you can't even cry. You know, sometimes you just want to completely isolate and shut out the world. And again, I would just encourage people to, you know, while you understand the importance of me time and, and having that time to yourself, taking so much time to yourself and just completely isolating and alienating the people around you, there comes a point where that is just really unhealthy because now you're not even letting in um, like the possibility of a new chapter, you know, in your life. And you can kind of end up re-traumatizing yourself that way. Um, and I guess like a good example of that is I, I knew a girl once who, um, she had this really one pretty sad traumatic year and it wasn't a physical death. It wasn't like a, a literal death, but it was, um, a breakup and it was pretty nasty. And, uh, the person just kind of just did a lot that just really alienated her from other people um, that she was really close to. And, you know, this was, I think she said maybe at least like five or seven or so. I mean, it was a long time ago. Um, well, woman, she wasn't a girl. Um, and so I would sometimes try and invite her, you know, over to my place, you know, for, you know, festivities. Okay, come over. We'll, you know, have dinner together. We'll have hot chocolate. We'll, you know, do all these like cool, fun little things, right? And she just decided, you know, no, Christmas is just hard for me. You know, it's just hard for me. And that's where the depression gets stuck. Because again, this had been kind of like seven years like prior. And she was still kind of reliving that story, just making up in her mind that she was going to have a difficult time. So I just want to encourage people who, you know, especially if it's been a while, and it doesn't mean that you won't have moments of sadness, but when you actually do get to a place of um, acceptance, which is the final stage of uh, grieving, um, you won't feel the need to justify how much you love that person by how much it is that you continue to suffer and how long it is that you continue to have trouble, you know, every time, whether it's their birthday that rolls around or the holidays that roll around, you'll no longer feel the need to do that. And so that's the acceptance part that I just want people to really kind of just to get to. And, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, I don't know how long that happens for everybody because, again, everybody's grieving process is different and it's unique to them. And there are varying degrees of, you know, healthy grieving and unhealthy grieving. And so if you're not sure where it is that you are in that, if you feel like this has kind of been going on for a long time and you just really would like to experience love and joy and peace and and a sense of celebration in your life, then, you know, 
then talk to someone and not necessarily a family friend, uh, family or friend, because I feel like when people have not really experienced loss, um, it's kind of hard for them to relate. And it doesn't mean that they don't care about you. It doesn't mean that they don't mean well, because a lot of people do mean well. You know, I remember when um, I was faced with the possibility of losing my grandmother, I think it was probably a few years before she actually passed away. And I was talking to this guy friend and I was, I was really upset because I think she had like had a stroke or something like that, but it was, I guess it was a mild stroke. It wasn't a major stroke. And he says, well, you know, how old is your grandmother? And I forget what I said. I, I guess at that time she was like 78 or 79. It's like, oh, well, she's lived a full life. And, you know, while that's true, and while that may give a lot of people some peace of mind and some solace, that doesn't work for everybody. And the last thing that someone wants to hear when they are like losing someone that has been a constant in their life for their entire lives is that, well, it's really not that big a deal. They're already old. You know what I mean? And again, like I think that people don't really necessarily mean it that way. But it's it's actually kind of insensitive um, because no one no one no one cares how old their family member is when they're when they're dying. They're not thinking. They're not measuring how much they're going to grieve by how old their grandparent is. Do you know what I mean? They're still going to miss them. There's still going to be that feeling of loss. They're still going. You know what I mean? There's still going to be these these stages of grief and while it's not you know exactly the same as losing someone suddenly who's really young you know like maybe like losing a child or you know a young sibling or something like that it's still significant for them so you know for me again I can't really tell everybody you know what what helps them or, or not um, because some people might get some kind of sense of peace from that. Um, I don't know who those people are. Um, I've not, as far as I know, I've not met these people, but I will say that um, just be mindful if you've not lost someone before, you know, kind of just watch a little bit what you say. And, you know, for me personally, um, because everybody's so different, I would just say, because I've actually lost someone and I know um, how loss affected me, how it affects me, and what I would really just want to hear in that moment. Sometimes it's nothing, um, but sometimes it's just as simple as, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Is there anything that you need? I am here if you want to talk. I'm here if you need a, a shoulder to cry on. I'm here, you know, just like I'm here if you need me you know, and I just got to say, I mean, that's sometimes like one of the biggest things that people can hear. It's not just like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I mean, I don't know. It's just like, it's just one of those things like where you just want to be, you know, mindful of what it is that you're saying. And if you're really being sensitive and, um, you know, people don't necessarily need to hear that you've never lost anyone before in that moment. That's probably not the best time for you to share that information. Um, but you can say, like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Is there anything I can do for you? Those, to me, are just kind of the most sincere because you already know if you haven't experienced it, you have no idea how you will feel or how, you know, you would feel in that moment. Um, that they're feeling. And so I just wanted to kind of like offer those little tidbits so that even when you're talking to people, you know, if you're not the one who's lost someone, but you're talking to someone who has, you know, you can kind of gauge by how they're talking and the things that they say, kind of like what stage that they're in and just know that it's grief and just do like do whatever it is that you can to just kind of like let them know that you really genuinely care. You care that they're going through it. You care that they don't feel all like 
merry and jolly and fun and jovial and you know I mean it just it's sometimes it's it's hard to even see other people experiencing you know being with certain loved ones that other people still have in their lives when they don't have you know that person or those people in their lives so I just want to just offer that for people to just be very sensitive you know towards other people and for people who've lost someone and just knowing that you're not alone you're not alone out there and you know just just reach out if you don't have to suffer in silence please don't please don't if you don't have to um and who knows like you could actually end up you know having a decent time i mean i'm not gonna say that you're gonna not even miss the person that you know that you're grieving because that's bullshit i mean you probably will i mean there's a very good chance and um and just to know that that's okay and just to reach out at all those different um you know resources that are available to you you know talk to that therapist whoever it is and just because it's a normal loss doesn't mean that therapy can't help some form of talk therapy cannot help because it can talking helps connecting helps because part of what it is that you're grieving is the loss of that connection in a way that where you can tell the person you love them and them hear you or um, you being able to hear them say that they love you back, you know, having them be able to like hug you and hold you and, and kiss your cheeks and, you know, whatever it is, just, just know that um, what you're going through is, is normal and it's natural and it's okay to give grief a place at the table. Just whatever you do, try not to let it sit there too long because the people that love you that have passed on you know they want you to be happy they want you to be happy so um happy holidays to everyone um whatever holiday it is that you you know that you um that you celebrate whether it's you know hanukkah or kwanzaa or christmas or whatever um just as much as you can, have a happy holiday and um, be safe. Be safe, reach out, take care of yourself, honor where you are at this stage in your life, um, and just know that you will be okay. So stay tuned for next week's episode. If there's anything that you got out of today's episode that you would like me to elaborate on in future videos and future posts, please, um, you know, feel free to leave comments in the chat. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, feel free to DM me. And as long as I, I get to it, I will definitely address it. And um, just uh, hang in there, okay? Um, I know 2020 has been rough and you've probably experienced your own level of, of roughness, some iteration of roughness, but, um, just hang on and say as much as you can, stay inspired. Until next time, guys, signing off.